YouTube and all my subscribers. This is basically a little tabletop of a few little ideas and plans that I've got blade wise, steel wise for 2012. Um, because the light's a little bit better if I've got all three of my spots in the garage shining down on something. Like my little shamah on the tabletop here. Um, well, go to the most pressing matters for myself is trying to get the two blades out. So, I need to get this one away once the sheep is done. And, um, freshly repower corded the monstrous assassin with the new scales on the back there. Um, you should be able to tell in the light they're not now a true Scandi. I've convexed them. So that's took an extra bit of time. But there they are. And of course he's been paracorded neat and tidy. And a lanyard on the back. So they've got to be sheaved up. So I've got to make the sheave. Get this away to Mike. This away to Pete. That's a nice blade. So, in terms of priority, these are number one priority. I've got to get these sheathed up. Um, and I got a couple of favours to post away. JKD185. Be on its way in the next week or so. There's a, another couple going to America. They do take a while to make. Now I got epoxy them in. Um, it's when I can find time on the lathe at work after my school day. I'll put a little hole in the end. So that's a little thing in the future as well. Whether or not I can rattle these out too quick, I don't know. But I should be able to take some orders around about from April, I'm guessing. So, there's my little ferro rods. They're not little, but you know, for me. That's an army type. Fire still there. Now, from months back, I had my sub £30 bushcraft blade trials, of which I'm still trying to find time to get on with it, of which this is one of the entrants. Uh, definitely I'm going to try and get on with that. What's knocked me back this last year in 2011 was the amount of knives I had to complete. I ended up with 10 and I had to close my books because that's as many as I can cope with at one time. Um, quite how far I can I can get into those this year, I don't know because I've only got like an angle grinder and a little belt sander and all the hours I'm working. But I do aim to catch up with that one. My sub £30 bushcraft knife review. Um, knives for 2012 I want to come back to and revisit was this one in 440c that I got off of Amazon. It's got a nice handle but if you remember the finish on it was abysmal. The metal inserts here, these inlays, was abrasive and had edges on it so you might be able to tell it's got some sanding done on there because I really scuffed this back a bit. Um, so I wouldn't mind having a go at getting this one outside again. Well, I'm a bit more impressed with the handle finish because it was nasty. It was catching your fingers on it. So there's that one by, I don't know if it's a Swerve or something. Pufe Puko. It's made in Finland, but this was 440C. Okay, onto some little small knives. At this, oh so sweet, from Chris of Black Forest Ghost. I've had a bit of a fiddle with the spring, so he doesn't shoot out quite so readily. It was a little bit more legal in England. Um, fiberglass handle. Really finely hollow ground. You should catch that in a light, the, the dish effect of that grind. And then the other side, very shiny. Um, very light, obviously because it's just plastic handle, but it does have steel liners. Wouldn't mind taking this one out. See how I get on with it, because he is quite light. So that's the Oh So Sweet by Kershaw. Very nice knife. 
And the other one is this. Now, I was on holiday with the family, and I went down to Wareham. And there's a hardware store and a fishing shop. I ended up getting this number 7 and a number 8 at a hardware store, both for six ninety five. Um, I think that's quite a good deal, especially for the 8. So, these are the lovely little sweet ones with the ferrule that turns, so that locks it, so the blade doesn't catch. That now, with the gap, allows the blade to close. And then you've got a chamfered, sort of, angled section there. So when you turn it that way, the blade can't go back up this channel, because he's locked behind this again. So actually, it's lockable both ways not universal carry in the world, certainly not in England but in terms of dropping it in your pack because you're out in the woods very useful, very useful great bit of steel, very high carbon steel and I think it's pear wood so it's incredibly light as well so you should see these out and about with me as well Right, um, another thing I've got to make a move on is once I've got two berserkers away, two um, young man with Rob, um, I want to try and get some prototypes out in 01. And I've had this flat ground, flat stop in 01. 30 by 4 by 500. I've had the two pieces of this for two and a half months. I still haven't had time to work on it. Um, what I aim to do is cut one piece in half. Okay, so one piece around 250, and do two bushcraft blades, and then cut the other one slightly longer one way than the other, and do a, like a, a bush baby, which is like a mini bush lore sort of idea, and then the bigger piece. I want to do a leku. Um, now, the leku won't be the sort of stick tang, fruity piece of birch and blocked up and peened over. I'm going to do it my way. Um, so, side scales slapped on the side with pins. But the actual leku shape going along and then that, that's going to remain. So, quite a hefty, longish sort of chopper. I'm guessing sort of that long and then the other side will be about this much will be the handle about there and maybe a three and a bit of an inch blade something like that sort of mini bush law mini wood law sort of effect there and yeah I think it'll be quite nice and obviously I know the hardening instructions there and I can do my temper in to get a, a vague rock well um, in the oven, I'm going to end up around about a 58 at home. Around about a 58, so pretty hard. Uh, that's not a plan for 2012. Tools in 01. Okay, could really do a bit of a, a plan for 2012 without including these three. First up, the, um... <laughs> oh dear. What about this one, eh? The Boosie Search and Rescue 4. Yes, I've used it. It's been out. It's done work. It's going to get cleaned up in a minute. But not a display knife. This is going to get used and loved. Number 178. Boosie knife. SR4. All the way from Auckland. This is, um. <laughs> yeah, the surprise of 2011 for me, this one. Um, not just an accessible in terms of what I thought these things cost, but the production run had actually finished on these things, hadn't they? And you end up in the blade forums and people selling them off and bid, bidding for them and things like that. Well, that's unless you. Or someone like Kylie about. Wow, look at that. Look at the gym pin on it. Beautiful knife. Much appreciated. 
and you know if only I had the one it would have been amazing but then uh, Bruce <laughs> he decided to send me this beautiful little skeletonized I think it's a game warden with sort of a two and a half inch blade on it and all those months I was there eyeing up Becker Neckers and Izulas unbelievable yep he's been used as well he was out the weekend so he's got some dirt on him yep no display knives in my area they all get used so SR4 beautiful boosty game warden and this thing gets he gets so much use it's ridiculous yep still got some potato on him I use this to eat with prep food, make fire sticks this thing does just about anything it's an, I think it's an old reciprocating saw blade and then um, Jimmy Foster of Fish Wolf SBK heat treats and all the rest of it now I did slightly back this off because this is one of his earlier blades but his thing's now gorgeous he did the Saxon for my oppo a couple of months back and this thing so light, who's not going to chuck that in your pack? It's great. Um, yes, I've got to clean it off. But I even had me dinner with this one. Fishwolf SBK knife. That's a definite add to my system. Um, for a sake, you just wrap it around like that. goes in the pack. As soon as you get anywhere, I either stick it around my neck or hang it off the tripod. And it's always there to use. Very useful bit of kit. So three more that you'll be seeing a lot more of in 2012 now couldn't have done a, um, a summer for 2011 and I'm moving forward to 2012 without giving this some credit damn this thing's amazing the uh, Swedish army Trangia type stove with the oval bottom tin top tin and the windproof sort of case but the stuff we can do in here is ridiculous I haven't begun to use it as an oven yet so more of this in 2012 brilliant bit of kit now also I use a lot it's this thing he's starting to get worn out now already the catch is starting to go on the top but what a stroke you can get off of this Okay, so he, he's on the top catch now. He's just starting to go, but the pull, the cut, unbelievable compared with a little Laplander. A little bit bendy. He doesn't lock when he's closed, so if he's in the pack, you need to make sure that he's he's safe. But great, you want to get on and get on with it. As soon as you get there, this thing is great fun. The longer sort of Maxminster. <sighs> yes, used. Wouldn't say abused. But this thing does a lot of work very quickly. Pretty hefty bit of kit. And I'm loving this handle. It's really narrow. I might actually bring my handles in ever so slightly more, knowing what this feels like. Put the thumb ramp on top. Still sharp as anything. Gorgeous bit of kit of this. Well pleased with it. Really pleased that I went for the BK7 rather than the BK2. Really nice bit of kit. Sheep is, well, pretty good. You know, it's not Kydex, but it's got a plastic insert. It's light, it's strong, got a decent snap, I haven't even begun to use the pouch yet. So, great. BK7, along with the other part of the, the badass payment was this Shrade number 2, Extreme Survival. Should see a bit more of this again this year. Yep, use this as well. Look at the marks on it. Very heavy. Nice bit of kit. 
should see more of that in 2012. And something I haven't seen much of, I'm starting to use it, is this. A little hatchet by Fiskars. Um, we've had a, um, like, sort of Texas do-it-all hardware store go completely into liquidation a couple of miles away from where I live. And I grabbed this as fast as I could. And I think I paid £4.30 for it. £4.30 for a Fiskars. Now, you look at the grain on it, it's completely, uh, completely wrong. But, a nice head on it, and it does have a reasonable sheath. So, I'll drop that pack every now and again, and see how we get on with it. So far, nice. And of course, there's little axe, and then there's this one. So far, superb bit of kit. For what I paid, £12.44, I think I paid for it on Amazon. I've made a new mask, and if I drop that down, look at the grain on it. Straight down, straight down through the middle. I got lucky with that one. I've seen um, grand scores with grain in the handle. Very similar to my Fiskars. All angly, all over the sides like that. Rather than that way, which is pretty damn straight on that back end there, that knob on the end. So, more of this, more of that, and definitely a lot more of that one. So, please join me again. So, summing up, I've got to get these away. Oh yes. Been a long time coming. Too much work. Not enough time, not enough money. <laughs> we'll get there. But, um, quite pleased how they've turned out and how they've evolved is the other thing because this was, this was a gamble for me incorporating jimping onto the actual handles and it works great thumb, I mean how wide my thumb is so why add the jimping just on the metal why not have it on the wood as well thumb, yeah and this one again the evolution of this one ended up with a lump of wood on the end there and that really is very much more comfortable than it was with just the metal there. Imagine this working on your fingers this side as you're swinging and having, you know, a lot of work going on with chopping. And there's, there is a skinning video of this somewhere, whether or not my opera can find it, or perhaps I, I pressed pause and I should have pressed record, I don't know. So we might have missed that one. But these two, I'm going to desperately try and get the sheaves made and get them to my compete as soon as I can. Sorry guys, this took so long. Anyway, this is Scott from Wessex Blades with a bit of a snapshot for 2012. All the best. Happy New Year. Mm. Now, what I thought I'd do is I'd tag a little bit on the end of the video. Um, and that's um, an open sort of invitation. Rather than me go out and you know, see me starting fires and splitting wood and cooking beef, um, it'd be nice if someone was able to tag me or suggest a challenge. So I take something on that's new and fresh, um, or maybe something that you're struggling with, like you know, I struggle with the fire bow, I struggle with knots. Um, you know, I, I do stuff with the bow drill, and I'm getting more heat in the bearing block. You know, I, I end up starting fires on the top of the spindle rather than the coal in the fireboard. That's just me. I, it just happens that way. Um, so, if there's a sort of thing you want me to take on, then please PM me. Now, obviously, <laughs> with kids and work and all my blade stuff going on, as long as it's not enormous, like build a log cabin or something, you know, go out, do something, it, that sort of idea. So if there's anything you fancy taking me on, just give me a PM. Scott from Wessex Blazer.